Okay. Andrew in Ohio, thank you for waiting for so long. You're live with Eric and V. No how are problem. you doing? How are you guys doing? Thanks oh, for taking my call. My doing good. goodness, that audio quality is great. It's lovely. I like this already. All right, fantastic. What's up? Yeah, I just wanted to talk. Yeah, I just want to talk about what Jesus said. Okay. And I always ask because I'm a Christian and I always wanted to I always think to myself, if God took human form, what would he say? And when I read the new when I read especially the gospels, I'm always thinking this is some amazing stuff right here and it just it pierces me right in my heart. And I guess the, the, my point would be just everything Jesus is saying is I feel it, it is the truth. Well, you know, you know what pierces me right in my heart is uh uh so do all who live to see such times. It is not about <laughs> it's the yeah, Gandalf. Gandalf and his quotes pierce me in my heart. And I feel like it is true that if there were real wizards, um, then Gandalf would be a real wizard because of the way his words impact me. I guess that Gandalf is what? What is that, Harry Potter or what? <gasps> oh, my God. <laughs> this call I'm, I'm shall done. not pass. I'm, Hold I'm, on. I'm done. This shall not. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't know if I can do this. Oh. No, sorry, Andrew. Um, <laughs> it, it, lots and lots of inside jokes. Um, it's it's getting real meta in here. Um, That's Lord of the Rings, ain't it? Yes, yes it is. Yes, it is. Yes, it You've is. absolved you. I think I saw the it's first. fantastic. I think I saw the first one. Um, so, um, v, <laughs> v gave you a, an example of why what you said, why it's not convincing for us, and I think that you've clearly shown that. Um, V's example of using exactly what you said uh, wouldn't be convincing for you, right? Uh, because something touched my heart. This is the second call we've had like that today. Mm -hmm. um, because something touched my heart does not mean that it is true. Um, because you can say that for other things that obviously are not true. And so if something can not reliably get you to truth and it's just a crapshoot, then is there any better reason for you to believe in God? Because... That's not a really good one. Or at least it's not convincing to us. Is yeah. the goal to convince us that it's true? Well, I don't know what would convince you because I don't think philosophy arguments are going to do it. And I don't think presupposition. <laughs> I see that. That's really popular now. Oh, I know. Yep. We're all mourning that. You know, honestly, it's job security. I mean, is what it is. fair. Yeah. See. Um, but yeah, no, uh, if you come in to a, a discourse and you're already planning on not listening to the other person and just saying, I've got the answers, yeah, it's not, it's not going to take you anywhere. And I think you would probably agree with me that that is not a good way to talk to somebody. It's just a good way to be condescending and ugh. Um, logic, if you could logically prove a god and then be able to show that that is based in the world that we live in. Awesome. That'd be cool. Um, I also think that if you were to build a Godometer uh, that is, can reliably detect gods and then detected that god and showed how that worked, that'd be cool. Um, if you could um, maybe get Jesus to show up and talk to us, you know, I mean, there, there, there are things that we could probably go down that route on. Um, but just saying that you like what Jesus allegedly said isn't necessarily the argument that's going to convince us. And why is it convincing you? Because I don't think, since there's a lot of skeptics out there that don't believe Jesus existed, I'm always thinking, if these people are making up this story, then how are they going to, what are they going to say that God would say to us if he revealed himself to us? Well, Does that make sense? It does, and I, I kind of want to give you an analogous um, idea here just to try and help maybe paint that in a different light. Um, I'm, I'm sure you know about Heaven's Gate. I've heard of that. Yeah, um, you, you had a cult that decided that um, they, they thought they had all the answers um, to the degree that they committed suicide. In 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 mass. Um, Is that the Jonestown one? No. Jim that, Jim Jones. That's another one. That's another one. <laughs> I 
I know. People can take to the grave an idea. You're talking about the one in uh, Waco. Nope, that's another one. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jesus did. Andrew, you're doing my job <laughs> for me. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, Jesus did predict that there would be false teachers. I mean, that's a really good way of saying I'm right, even if I'm not right. Uh, that's also exactly what a false teacher would say. Yeah. I. So <laughs> what I'm saying here is people can take to the grave ideas that they think are true and those ideas not be true. We have examples of that. And you actually listed more than I would have been able to off the top of my head right now. So... Even if we grant that those apostles believed what they saw, doesn't mean that they're necessarily true. Well, I was reading in a psychology book that only, it was like an encyclopedia of psychology because I'm trying to study up on other things. Sure, the, 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 the zero, DSM? That 0.2% of people suffer from delusions, so it's very high. If, I, I, if you're going to... Actually, if I, you're gonna admit, go ahead. Oh no worries. I, it, it depends on how you define a delusion, because, mm -hmm. dude, um, it happens way more often than you think. If you want to experience a delusion, don't eat for a couple days, <laughs> um, or don't sleep for a while, um, because that you, you can you can get there too. If you want to do some drugs um, that can alter your brain chemistry, you can also experience things that are not true, that are just messing with your brain chemistry. So to write that off, I, I, I don't think you can, man. I, I think there's a whole lot more that goes into it. And I'm not saying that the apostles were these maniacal, evil conspirators. Um, they could have believed if they existed at all. But right now we're stuck with a book. And the book says, hey, I'm totally true. And that's not a good reason to believe it. You well, should have a good reason. Do we all assert that our evidence is true? Because the Bible asserts its evidence. Yeah, the book and of Eric asserts that it's true. Well, you didn't write a book, Eric, but maybe in, in the future. Oh, no worries. But it's because I'm not done writing it yet. Um, it is okay, my son. I will absolve you. Um, <laughs> I, I, I know it sounds really, you know, snarky, but I can write a book and it'll, it can say hey, this book is totally true. That does not make it more likely true. It just means that that book says well, we're that. talking about books here. We're not talking about one book. Unless you believe oh. the Gospels are written by one person. Okay. Um, so let's just not even fettle with the small stuff. <laughs> um, does the idea of a compilation of books make it more likely true? Yes. Is it more likely true even if you find out that that compilation of books was selected for um, more than once? Because let's take it. Islam I, I, is completely I, relying I, on Muhammad. Yeah. I, I, I'm, Would you rather have multiple eyewitnesses or one? Um, I, I'd rather talk about your God and talk about Muhammad with a Muslim. Um, so let's, let's, let's stick with you. Um, have you heard of the Council of Nicaea? Actually, you don't even have I to. I believe 312 AD. Okay. Yeah. Uh, have you heard of the first and second councils of Trent? Is that the one where they determine the Bible? Mm -hmm. That would be it. But that's um, pretty amazing, don't you think? No. No, not at all. That's where we get one iota of a difference. Because they it took 300 years to decide whether Jesus was of God or w w he was God. So, hold on. That if, 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 if I write a book and it says that I'm right, and then people later on say, we like this book, but we're going we're, we're gonna to make a couple changes to it, and then it stays that way, where along that line have you determined that what I wrote was true? Well, we have that. That's where we go with the manuscript evidence. The main what? Manuscript evidence. The manuscript evidence. Okay. So um, for that, I will in my mind be thinking, okay, I have this obviously fictitious book. It will say the same thing you're about to say. I'm going to need you to show me why your book is true and mine is not. 
what book are you? I'm asserting the Bible's true. Cool. So what are you asserting? Book of Eric. And I'm not. It's it's a it's a very very snarky response, but it points a really important picture here. It paints a really important picture here, um, and that is that just because you assert it doesn't mean it's true. Oh right, I've got the book. Why don't I bring the Book of Eric out? Um, okay, so so what about the Bible makes it true? Because it says it's true. Well, mine says it's true too. So now they're both yeah, on equal footing. Revelation to us because we are separated from him. Um, so this is how to reveal himself to us. I, I, I'm, I appreciate that you have figured out how I reveal myself to you. Also, I'm talking to you. Hi, Andrew. Hello. Okay. So, actually, I think I win. Because um, here, here, here's some evidence that uh, at least the book where I say I'm God, we have evidence of. You can come to Austin. I can meet you. We can have a beer. I'm saying hi. Um, I think I win. Do I win? I'm, I'm pretty sure I win. I don't understand your point. I guess why would God reveal himself to sinners, I guess, is the, my main question to you. I don't. Uh, why? Why? Wait. We haven't even determined that your God is a real thing, more or less whether or not it's a he. Um, and then why? Then we're talking about what? its characteristics and what it would likely do. Why? You've you got to back up the idea that that God exists in the first place. You're saying you're pointing to the Bible, and I'm saying, hey, cool, show me and tell me how that how you came to the conclusion that that's true. And I'm trying to use different tools to help show, okay, this might be a good tool, or that might be a bad tool. Um, you got to work with me a little bit, man. I know these are these are hard topics when you nope when we have not really views on the world. Um, actually, nope. It just takes time, and it takes a dedication to wanting to know what is true and following the evidence wherever it takes you. Exactly. I agree. So, um, are you an atheist now? <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, that would have so, been too easy. Uh, right? It would have been a Christmas present. <laughs> <laughs> Andrew, I, I... Yeah. I'm so, sorry, this conversation went nowhere. I feel like it went nowhere. No, I... I here, here's what's happening. I mean, I'm going to level with you, dude. Um... It is likely that someone is going to watch this video and say, I believe the Bible because it told me to. Right? There's a children's song, and I'm not going to sing it or else I'm not going to get it out of my head. <laughs> Thank um, you. It is now in my head. So You're welcome. Appreciate it. Um, that's not a good reason. Because it speaks to me, because I found something meaningful in it, is not a good reason. Because it it's meaningful? old? Is it all meaningful? Hmm? Is, is the whole whole story of this fifteen hundred years it, that it took for all these sixty six books is the story compatible with what we see in in reality? No. no. Show me miracles. Uh, Captain Sullenberger, uh, the Hudson River. Uh, he crashed a plane. Everyone survived. So you're saying that a plane cannot crash where everyone survives? That you determined that a miracle or the supernatural is more likely. When the media, go ahead. When the media describes that as the miracle of Hudson, does that upset you? No. Words don't upset me. Well, you just said miracles didn't exist, so. Yeah, that, that, that is also the, true. The highly the, unprobability of the Hudson River crash. What's the probability of people surviving a crash versus the probability of that God existing and intervening? Do you know? How did you make that uh, that judgment? Yeah, that would be an interesting calculation. Yeah. How highly likely is that what God? Determine, what determines a miracle? What Th is that, life a miracle? That's what we... that So, funny story. We leave it to the believer to tell us what a miracle is. My functioning uh, idea of a miracle is something that is explained, something that we don't know that ex that's explained by the supernatural. The supernatural being something that is not in this world, in this universe that we live in. And I see no reason to think that there's anything that I, where do I even start? I we, don't even know. Yeah. So, so what is a miracle? Well, are you defining it as something that's super cool? 
Because then I'll agree with you. Something with a low probability rate? Yeah, okay, fine. Things happen that are have a low probability um, but and still happen. Yeah, but I think you're talking, I think you're trying to use that to point toward the intercessory nature of a god. And to do that, you need to determine how often that god intercedes and show and maybe determine, hey, how do we know that God interceded here but didn't over there, right? What's a, what, what does a false positive look like? Also, I could ask why did they need to crash the plane in the Hudson in the first place if God was in charge of what was going on? God knew the engine, yeah. He had no engine power and he had to crash. He couldn't make it to uh, the one... He couldn't make it back to Newark, and he couldn't make it to Teterboro in New Jersey. Well, yeah, I know the story. I know why. But my question is, why are we attributing just the fact that nobody got hurt or everyone survived to God and not the fact that the plane crashed to God? That when it happened, I thought people would have been killed. And I couldn't believe it. And it was shocking that they weren't. Okay, so things that are shocking and unlikely are miracles? I will, it's, it makes you think. I, I agree that it's interesting. Um, it's also incredible to see skilled people in their jobs do a good job. <laughs> and I think that it takes away from the profession that that person obviously is really damn good at to say, no, 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 no. You weren't a good doctor and saved my family member's life. You weren't a good pilot and saved all of these people. You weren't a good police officer, first responder. No, 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 no. It couldn't be that somebody actually had skills that they used to help others. No, it has to be a miracle. I think it cheapens the entire experience, Andrew. My little brother did CPR on a camp counselor this summer and helped save his life. And the, the reporting from his Christian camp slash college was this, this kid and God <laughs> saved this person's life. So n no, no uh, mention at all of the CPR. Well, no, it was CPR, but also God. For some reason, because CPR apparently by itself doesn't save people. Yeah. Andrew, do, do you see why this is so problematic? I understand. Yeah. It's, cool. it's uh, you know, it's a, <laughs> trying to prove, yeah, I understand. Rock on. Well, I'm, I'm glad you do. And I hope that... Um, that it helps, you know, and, and I, I would love for you to take time and think about it because if you were to call back and say, hey, you know what, I thought about it and um, I'm no longer convinced by that, but this is something that I'm convinced by. Yeah. We'll talk to you about it. Um, I don't want you to go through your life with bad tools and I, I want to try and sharpen what you have and, and give you the best tools to understand the world around you that we can. I think it benefits you everywhere. Um, because something speaks to me, because I really believed it, because it's old, those are things that people can use to sell you snake oil. Those are things that people can use to hurt the ones you love, to take advantage of them. I don't want that to happen to you. So hopefully by showing you the flaws in it, you might at least insist on better evidence for yourself. Yeah, this has been a fun conversation. So. Cheers. I'm I'm glad. Glad. Awesome. Good. Um, to have a good one, man. Thank you. Thanks for calling in, right. Andrew. I'll see you next year. Yeah, new decade. It's going to be crazy. Yeah. Agreed. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. All right. Thank you. <sighs> so, uh, Matt actually came up to the glass. Oh, my goodness. Yes. And he brought me something, a little gift from the UK. It's the inner circle of atheism. <laughs> it's a real thing. Shirt. <laughs> I need to wear this. It's beautiful. It's fantastic. Thank you. That is really, really cool. I like this a lot. I'm not going to strip on stream, uh, but I am going to wear this.